As a creator, being a perfectionist can be your downfall at times. Always looking to get the perfect grade, the perfect mix, the perfect edit, or even the perfect motion graphic movement. Perfectionism sometimes rules over our projects, and not in a good way. Every once in a while though, we need to feed into that perfectionism. Finding the delicate balance is the key to moving forward and making progress. Sometimes, as a creator, you have to dial in to that edit just a little bit more. Sometimes, you need just a little bit more precision. Spencer Ryan here. So you want to dial in your creativity a little bit. You probably clicked on this video because you're interested in the Loop Deck Live. I'm going to dive into this a little bit, but I don't want to do a full review. As a matter of fact, I think there's plenty of full review videos out there on the Loop Deck Live and they do a great job. What I'd like to do is focus on the Loop Deck Live as a tool for creators. At Surface, let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. This thing looks like an Elgato Stream Deck. As a matter of fact, when I posted it to my Instagram channel, a lot of people said that this was the Elgato Stream Deck. Don't understand why they felt the need to say that, as if I didn't know what product I was posting, but it did get confused a little bit. But my friends, I am here to tell you, this is not an Elgato Stream Deck. This is a Loop Deck Live, and it is way better. You see, Loop Deck is known for making tools for creatives and the live console is no different. As a matter of fact, the live is kind of like the little brother to the Loop Deck CT and Loop Deck CT stands for a creative tool. <sighs> yeah, you see where I'm going with this. The biggest thing about the Loop Deck Live is it's kind of like it's big brother counterpart. It's just missing a couple of things from the bottom, but not in a bad way. If I had to imagine what the Loop Deck Live was built for, I think that the live comes in at that tool that can be used for streamers, for creatives, people that dabble in a lot of different things that just need one product at a great price that can kind of do it all for them. I think that's the strong point, but we'll get into that in a minute. So what is the Loop Deck Live? Well, essentially when you think about a computer, right, and your input output devices, you're kind of limited in this two dimensional manner. You've got your keyboard and then you've got your mouse. And a lot of people use the keyboard and mouse to interact with their day-to-day -day programs, whether it be video editing, whether it be streaming, whether it be gaming, that's what we use typically. The Loop Deck Live adds this third dimension to the input of your computer. It offers dials, touch screens, buttons, customizable workflows. It is a tool that helps you add on to the experience of interacting with the programs that you're using on a day-to-day -day basis. So on the front, you've got this little touchscreen grid here, and then you've got the dials and you've got the buttons. Now the great thing about this grid and the dials and the buttons is pretty much you can map this to anything you want. This is fully customizable. You can map it for any application and generate custom controls. But not only that, Loop Deck Live has API based integrations that work deeply and natively with the Adobe Suite, Final Cut Pro, OBS, Twitch, and many more, many, many more applications. As a matter of fact, they have a whole library of profiles that you can download that are custom made from Loop Deck to interface with specific programs. But the beauty about it is, is that you can customize it. See, I had the Loop Deck Live plugged in, fired up Adobe Premiere to do some video editing, and I actually didn't like the profile layout. I wanted something a little bit different, so I built my own workspace. And I'm gonna show you that workspace in a second, but what I'm trying to get across here is the beauty of the Loop Deck Live is how customizable it is. The applications for this could go limitless. You know, I could think of if you're running a live event and you need to switch cameras, you know, go to B camera, C camera, whatever the case may be, you could program that, map that to specific buttons. If you're streaming, you know, just like with any other streaming tool, you could map a specific button to shout out a certain follower, whatever the case may be, you could customize this for all of your needs. But on a creative side, 
There's so much more that you've unlocked, especially when it comes to Lightroom and Premiere and Final Cut. I want you to think for a second. I want you to think about the layout here. And you've got your dials, you got your touch screens, you got your buttons. What could a dial be used for? Potentially you could scroll through the timeline on a video editing app. You could adjust the volume, the keyframes of the volume. Uh, you could tap these buttons to switch and toggle between different tools. You could tap one of these buttons to turn Lumetri colors on and off. You could map these buttons to specific workflows, whether you're dealing with color grading, audio editing, graphics, whatever the case may be, you can map these to anything you need. And not only that, it adapts to the program you're using. So if you're in Premiere and then you switch over to Illustrator, it's going to change over to the Illustrator profile. If you switch over to Final Cut, it's gonna change over to the Final Cut profile. It adapts, the content on this device adapts to whatever program you're using. But you're not limited to it because if you're using Twitch and you go over to Call of Duty, you probably want your Twitch controls to stay. And for streamers, you can actually lock the workflow as well, which is super handy. But that's all talk and no action. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to go ahead and plug this in and show you exactly what you can do with this thing when it comes to editing videos in Premiere. So let's go ahead and hook this up, dive right into Premiere Pro and color grade some footage. All right, so if I press this number one button here, you can actually see that I've got a lot of the Adobe suite already configured. So I'm just gonna click on Premiere Pro, which launches Premiere Pro here on the computer. And we're gonna open the project with the sample footage. Now, right off the bat, you can actually see that the content of the Loop Deck Live has shifted to match the tools of Premiere Pro. So we've got the blade tool, the selection tool, rate stretch tool, and I've actually customized all of this to my own liking. Now we've got this clip here that is from a drone shot that I took in Asheboro, North Carolina. It's just a simple drone shot. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and color grade it. So I'm gonna click the number two button which is going to bring up a customized panel and I'm gonna click workspace four, which brings up the color workspace. And then I'm gonna click the Lumetri scopes button, which brings up my scopes. So now I've got my scopes and I'm ready to go ahead and start color grading. So I'm gonna click the basic correction tool and right here on this left hand side, I've got the contrast dial. I'm gonna max this contrast out until I feel like it looks good, which is right about there at a hundred. And then I'm going to take the basic correction continued and adjust the color wheels of the shadows, midtones, and highlights, the luma value. So I'm gonna bring these shadows down a little bit and bring these highlights up ever so slightly and bring these midtones down slightly. That looks pretty good so far. Now I'm gonna adjust the color temperature and I'm gonna bring it over a little bit more towards the warmer side. I feel like that looks good right there, right about at 14. Then I'm gonna click the Lumetri FX on off button to see what it looked like before and after. You can already see a drastic difference on this clip. So now we're gonna go ahead and get into the actual color grading itself. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually adjust the curves, specifically the hue saturation curves. I typically do this with my mouse because I do find this to be the easiest way to do it. So right off the bat, I'm gonna take the saturation of the blues and bring that all the way down. I'm gonna to go to the hue versus hue curve. I'm gonna start adjusting the greens to give it a little bit more of a orangey yellow look. There we go. Kind of like the way that looks. Just need to adjust this teal parameter here. Now what I can do is I can actually go into the color wheels here and I can manually adjust the split toning or color grading from the dials here. So if I start using the shadows, you can actually see that I'm adding a certain hue, green hue to the shadows. And if I pull up the color wheels menu, you can actually see this happening right here. So I'm gonna dial in specific adjustments. tones a little bit. Highlights. Looks good. All right, before and after. 
enough there. And that already looks like a really good grade. Add some sharpness. The other cool thing that you can do is you can actually make this full screen and start making adjustments straight from here. So if I start moving the exposure, you can see that I don't actually have the Lumetri color panel pulled up, but yet I can still make the adjustments with full screen. And anytime you press these dials, it resets. So if I make the adjustments way too far, I could just reset back to normal by clicking on the dials. I actually like the way this looks, but I do want to show you a couple of other things. So again, on this customized content flow that I have here, you can see on the top left, it says one frame or five frames. If I move this adjustment, it actually goes through and each click on this knob is one frame. If I do five frames, each click is five frames as you would expect. If I roll this zoom dial here, you can actually see that it's zooming in and out of my timeline. And if I do that on the preview window, it does the same thing. So if we zoom in here and I actually split this into three different pieces, if I roll this select clip dial, you can actually see that every time I move it a notch, it selects a different clip, which is really neat. This makes it really easy to go through all your clips and just select when you're in the zone. And then if I roll this jog dial here, you can just see it scrolls through the timeline at your own pace. As you can see, the Loop Deck Live has a plethora of options, and I think it's the tool that many creatives could find to be extremely useful, especially creatives like me, who tend to dabble in a lot of different things. I work in marketing, I like to play games, I want to start streaming, and I do a lot of work in the Adobe Suite and Final Cut. So this tool kind of gives me the bridge between all of those different things. It allows me to add an extra layer, an extra dimension of input into all of these different programs that I use. I think that this could be a great tool for people to offer just a little bit more precision when it comes to their workflows. A lot of questions that I got is, about the learning gap and whether or not it's faster to use this or just a keyboard and mouse. And I think that as, you know, people in this generation, we've come to know the keyboard and mouse like the back of our hand. And so, of course, when you add a device like this into the element, it's gonna be new at first, but eventually you start to pick up on the workflow. You start to get a little bit quicker. And I think that once you learn that, it can be just as effective, if not more effective, because of the customizations and all the different options you have on this thing to use this in your workflow. So, Loop Deck Live, pretty awesome tool. Not just a tool for streamers, but a tool for creatives. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so that the YouTube algorithm pushes it out to the many, many people like you because I need subscribers, I need views to keep this thing going, and uh, I do it because I love it, but it's always nice to have a little bit of mutual engagement there. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so already. Click that subscribe button, click the bell button so you get notified every time I make a video like this. Follow me on Instagram at the Spencer Ryan, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh,